Gotta make sure we're recording because, oh my God, if I had a dollar for every time I recorded a whole hour session and I don't record the audio, bro, I'd be rich. I, I'd have a whole mixing studio on the game. Welcome back, everybody. I hope everybody's doing great. And just like you heard, I'm going to show you guys how you can turn something very dry and basic into something that's luscious and vibey and super atmospheric and you want to put it on repeat and you want to just keep listening to it because it's just so nice sounding <laughs> and so without further ado let's just get right into this all right so let's start off with hearing what we're working with right now and so let me just switch to pattern mode and let's check this out it's so bad it's not even playing sound <laughs> why is it not playing sound though yeah, that sounds very basic and like not really that attractive to listen to unless you li like listening to sine saw waves. But yeah, so this is a three oscillator, which is a very, very basic plugin provided by FO Studio. We're going to replace this with one of my favorite plugins, Silent One. Let's hear how that sounds. All right, all right, chill, 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 chill. Not that one. And yeah, all right, so we're going to want to go to insert. It sounds cleaner than three oscillators. When you want to play a chord. It sounds all weird, it sounds all cut off, and that's because of the polyphony. So every time I open a new initial preset in silence, I always turn it up to 16 because I want to play those jazz, I want to play those chords. We're going to go to our oscillator A1, and we're going to turn the voices up all the way to 8. So we're going to also set the detune to about 10 o'clock, and that's what we got so far. It sounds, it sounds pretty nice. And so let's add more to it. So let's go to oscillator A2, and we're going to turn up the pitch all the way plus 1. And so with these voices, we're also going to turn it up A. And don't forget, it's automatically default to a sine, but let's change that to a saw wave. And let's also set the detune to about 10 o'clock. And automatically, it sounds very nice, very better than the one we just had in 3 oscillator. And yeah, all right. So let's use part B and let's create two more oscillators. So what the previous three oscillators didn't have is it only just had two saw waves, but they didn't have any voices. And so it sounded very basic, but with silence, we're going to add four different kind of layers to them. Typically have to create all these different layers. And so I want to avoid that in this video because I want to keep my production very sleek, very simple. And also it's easier on the CPU too. <laughs> part A is going to be kind of the main body. And so let's go to part B and let's create also eight voices, but this time we're going to turn the pitch up to two. And so this is going to be kind of like a little cloud layer. If you guys will, I call this the cloud layer because it's a super high and it's going to be very detuned. And so we're going to turn the detune up all the way to five. Wow. I got exactly five. Yeah. All right. And now let's turn this pitch also up one, go to saw. Let's turn the voices up eight and let's also turn this all the way. Let's see if I can get exactly at five. Can I? Yes. All right. And that's what it sounds like. Now it sounds like a like a trancey techno kind of super saw. And so what we're going to do is we're going to turn mix beat down three scrolls. Actually, no, four. My bad. Four. Four looks about better. This is what it sounds like with only just part A activated. And this is what it sounds like with part B in the background as well. Let's also turn the master down a bit. And it sounds way more fatter, way more wider. I don't know the word. Way more better. <laughs> and yeah, and so that's the first part into transforming this into something super better. We have our nice sounding super saw ready, but it's to me, it still sounds very dry. And typically you would think that you can fix it by some EQ, adding some reverb, adding all these delays, adding some chorus, whatever. But sometimes that might not even cut it. Sure, it would add reverb, sure it would add a nice atmosphere, but sometimes that there would still be something missing. And so one thing we can do right before adding the reverb and EQ is changing the way these chords are. Right now we're in the key of A major. I wanna make this more juicy, you know? So let's add a C sharp and let's add an E. Woo! The name of this chord is called the D major nine. The reason why is because on D we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're adding the ninth one. We're also adding the seventh one as well. All right, so now let's go to the second chord. And this is pretty much an A, this is an A major inversion over C sharp. But I want to make it more nice, make it more vibey. So I want to add a G sharp. Let's add a B. And yeah, I'm going to take off the C sharp. Let's put it up here. And so what we got right here is, I don't even know the name. Ooh, that sounds so much better though than what we have. This is what we had before, right? 
Now we have this. And that sounds way better. What this is, I think this is an A major nine. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken here, let's look it up right now. Oh yeah, it is an A major nine. Yes. There's something about nine chords that sounds so nice. All right, and so now these last two chords. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna transform this by adding an E to that, making this an F sharp major seven, but it sounds so nice. Way better than what we had before. Let's, and now on our last chord, I'm going to make this E major by adding a G sharp, an A, a B, and an E. And so just by adding a couple of notes, right? Sure, they're called D major sevens, D major nines, but don't let that confuse you. Just add notes that you that that sound nice to you. You know what I mean? Honestly, when I created these chords, I, I wasn't like, you know what? Let's add a D major nine here. Or let's add an E, add seven, so five. You know what I mean? No, I just added these notes and I thought they sounded nice. But it's also good to know the names of these so that you can always implement them and know when to put them and know what you're putting, you know, which is called cool. Hashtag music theory. Ha. But yeah, guys, so now let's take a listen to our upgraded chord progression. That sounds so much better. That's what's up. And so yeah, we didn't add any EQ yet. We didn't add any reverb, any processing. Literally, this is just the saws, its voices, its detuned, and also the chords. And it sounds so much nicer. All right, so what we're gonna do is I also wanna add another layer. Let's add a serum this time, only because of its specific waves. Uh, let's go to analog and let's add a DS saw and try. So this is pretty much kind of a mix of a saw wave and a triangle wave, I think. I'm going to do a method that I really like to use when uh, layering since I like to just copy the bass. All right, so I'm copying the the, the the base of the chord progression and, I, and I'm going to just add the second note in the chord. So since this is D major, I'm gonna add an F sharp. Since this is a C, kind of C minor in a sense, I'm going to add the E, kind of F sharp, I'm going to add an A, and then I'm just going to add a G sharp right here, like that. I really think that's nice because it adds a lot of body and it adds a lot of that low end, and that's what's gonna make this whole vibe sound more, ugh. And yeah, all right, so instantly, let's take a listen to what we have now using these only two synths. All right, and so now let's add this into a mixer track and let's add some processing to that. Actually, let's name this. I'm going to name this Detuned Saw. Let's add a color. Let's make this, let's make this Sienna. Ooh, nice. And let's also add a color to this one. Also Sienna. And so let's add this to a mixer bus. And so now let's go over some of the processing. So typically when I have a layer, I always like to add it to a bus so that I can always just adjust the bus and that goes for the overall sound of it. And yeah, my detune saw and my saw, I'm just going to leave them alone. And so I'm gonna do all the processing on my super saw. And so what I'm going to do on these saws is I'm gonna add a parametric EQ2. Uh, I always like to go to the 20 hertz to 18 kilohertz cut because it's it's super simple. It also looks nicer too. I think it looks nicer. All right, so we're gonna cut the low end at around 64 hertz. I don't want the saw to, to get in the way of the bass. All right, and so what we're gonna also add is a free plugin called OTT, which really helps Hecka. This is a multi-band compressor and I think it really can make sounds pop. So automatically, before, and I didn't even touch anything, but let's adjust it a bit more to make it uh, sound more natural, you know? And so what we're gonna do is turn up the high a little bit, just a tiny bit, and also the mid a bit. I like to have the highs at zero because I don't want to increase the highs or take out because I think they sound that fine already. And the mid, um, I, I adjust the threshold until I'm reaching about negative four dB of gain reduction on the mid and also on the low, about negative four as well, like this. Before. After. Woo! Nice! Let's see how that sounds in the mix already. And one thing that I also really like to add on my super saws is some reverb because reverb, who doesn't like reverb, right? This is a free plugin called Valhalla Supermassive and uh, it sounds so amazing, guys. There's so many presets and each preset really sounds nice. And so we're gonna use a medium preset called Lost Saucer. That's why I love this plugin, guys. Let's turn the mix down. And also let's turn the low up because uh let's let's cut off the low end on the reverb. Let's let's cut that to around there. 
And so let's put the mix to around 6%. So it's very, very subtle, but it's there. I don't know about you guys, but this sounds way nicer than the three oscillators that we had. All right, and so we have our super saws laid into our track, right, and our vocal chops, but there's no bass. And so we gotta add that bass, all right? This is a preset called Big Bass. It's on the first bang that automatically comes up. It's called Big Bass, and this is what it sounds like. And we're also gonna EQ it a bit. We're gonna add a sub bass, like a dedicated sub bass. So we're gonna cut a bit of the sub frequencies. We're gonna use this bass mainly to make a kind of the high end pop, to add some grumble, to add some uh, distortion to that, you know? And yeah, and so like I said, we're gonna add a dedicated sub bass. <laughs> if you're not using headphones, you probably can't even hear it. What I like to do on this bass is I always like to add an overdrive. So let's do that. This is one thing I really like to do on my pure sub basses. Uh, overdrive really adds like some uh, harmonics to it. So if you're listening to it at small speakers, you can still hear the bass. That's a very good method in uh, when using 808s. Always add some overdrive so that that bass can be, you know, nice, fat, harmonic. And so... Let's turn it around there. Around 12, around one o'clock. And so adding these kinds of basses along with our super saw sounds like this. I'm going to add some bonus stuff, you know, to make this track, you know, very, very more vibey, very atmospheric. Yeah, we got hecka dope super saws, but the vocal chops, you know, aren't popping. What I did to my vocal chops is I added a sound goodizer. This is an FL Studio exclusive. It's pretty much just a multi-band compressor, but uh, in just one knob, you know what I mean? Yeah! And so we got a Rough Rider 3. This is also a free compressor plugin. I really like the interface. Some compression on the vocal chops helps to make it sound more uniform. You know, it brings the low parts up and it turns the high parts low. Very subtle, but it just increases the presence of the vocal chops. And also, we I also added a reverb, also Lost Saucer, man. Like, I've been messing around with this preset and I think this one is a great overall preset. And also some EQ, just to cut off the low ends. We're also gonna add like a little ARP. And so this is an ARP sound. Right, and so that in the background, you know, just makes it really nice. So let's add that to our build and our drop. And also one more thing, let's add kind of like a little nice lead sound. But this is gonna be super subtle in the background, just kind of like a nice little melody in the background. So let's add that. And so one thing that's very nice is with the nice master, you can get everything to pop more. Hey, it actually sounds nice, even in itself. Wow, this has no mastering on it. But with the mastering on it, everything pops more and has like more presence, you know? And yeah, guys, also another tip you can do to create an overall great vibe, right, is to add some automation so that when the drop comes, everything, you know, it's like, oh, you know what I mean? And yeah, this is a method that I really love to do because I just love the sound of a, of a nice super saw. I'm still on the road to finding the perfect sound, right? But let me tell you guys, this to me sounds like super amazing, guys. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to spice up your tracks. And if you guys actually did uh, replicate this, send it to me, guys. Send me your songs where you guys actually did this. And yeah, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for some more content coming soon. And also comment down below what you guys want to see next. And yeah, peace out everybody.